Okay. Okay. Well, praise God. Well, Sister Fasola, will you open us in prayer today? We would appreciate that. Yes, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father God, we just want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness in our lives. Father God, as we've gathered here this evening, um, afternoon or whatever time it is, Lord, Father God, we just pray that you will be with us, O oh Lord, and that your name will be glorified. Father God, I pray that you'll speak to each and every one of us afresh, O oh Father God. And that which you're telling us, O oh Lord God, we will understand, O oh Lord, and it will gain ground in our lives, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you that your name will be glorified. Take all the glory, O oh Lord God, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, Sister Kaya, if you have a song for us today, we would love to hear what the Lord has placed on your heart today. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. The song is called Let Us Search and Try Our Ways. Beautiful. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands. Lift our hearts with our hands unto God in the heavens and return again to the Lord. It is of the Lord's mercies that we Kaya, that is beautiful. Where is your phone? Or your microphone. Where is your phone? When I'm not using the phone, I'm using the laptop. Okay. Oh, you're using your laptop. And where is it? Is it to the side or is it on top of the piano? It's on the side because uh, on the middle, in the middle of the piano, it's a note holder, notation holder. So the only thing, only place where I could I could put my laptop is on the side. Okay. Are you able to raise your volume all the way up on your computer? It's already 100 yeah. percent. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're having difficulty hearing you. That's why Sandra is saying that. Yeah. So even now when you're talking, it's very light. So I'm not sure. We'll have to work on that. Amen. With yeah, your iPhone. I don't know why that that computer it's a new computer fairly new uh -huh. and it's up to 100 percent but for some reason it's faint now right now you're nice and loud yeah it's very good but because i'm holding it in front of my mouth maybe i don't know a couple inches from my mouth okay. i see okay amen praise god praise god well bless you right, so continue you. without the piano then Sing it right yeah. there while you're holding it. Yeah, Go can ahead. you do you sing? want? Do you yes. want me to sing it one more time? Okay. A cappella. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. 
Let us lift up our hearts with our hands. Lift our hearts with our hands unto God in the heavens and return again to the Lord. It is all the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new like the dew every morning we Father great is thy faithfulness. Mm. The Lord is my portion. Yes, Lord. Set my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good. Unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Amen. That's beautiful, Kaya. You don't need the piano. Amen. You're you're in perfect pitch. Praise God. Okay. Amen. 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 Can I Praise have God. A for someone special for me or or shall we shall we pray at the end no go ahead kaya we we lost you for a moment yeah okay yeah. well okay. i would like to say little prayer for someone very dear to me in slovakia it's my uh high school schoolmate her name is Bronya she's in her 50s like I am of course and she's in the last stage of cancer mm -hmm. she has intestinal cancer and she lives only from day to day because she doesn't know when she's going to pass they are not giving her much hope and I spoke with her today and I wanted to share a gospel with her, but there was no opening. And I told her we're coming July 1st and I want to meet with her. I want to give her a Bible and share a gospel with her. And I want the Lord to keep her that six weeks because her state, her condition can turn any day for worse. So... Lord, we lift up Bronya today. Amen. We lift up this precious one. Lord, you know she's heavy on my heart and I suffer with her. Lord, there was no opening today through the phone. But I want to believe that when we are in person in July, that you will give me strength and energy and right words to speak for her salvation. Lord, the word says, even if when we believe in you, even if we die, we will live. So I want to share this truth with her, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We'll, we'll continue to pray for her. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, amen. Brother Russ, Sister Susan, so glad to have you with us today from Colorado. Amen. Uh, we're blessed and we're trusting that the Lord has placed something uh, on your heart for the brethren here today. Amen. So Brother Russ, Sister Susan, amen. We turn it over to you. Praise God. Amen. amen. Well, it's good to, it's good to be here. And I believe, um, uh, I believe I, I have some things I'd like to share. Um, I want to go back a little bit. Um, we're in we're in Colorado right now. We've been here um, since the beginning of March. We did go back to Georgia for um, a week, and and we're back here just for two weeks. But uh, there's something there's some things that really God has provoked in me, um, and it actually 
started back in 2019, maybe 18 actually. And the Lord really was, was really prompting me to, to um, investigate the foundation, my foundation. And actually, uh, Sister Kaya's song uh, yeah. just today uh, really speaks the word that I want to share. Let us search and try our ways yeah. uh, and turn again to the Lord. Yeah. You know, there's a time we're moving along and everything seems to be flowing. Everything seems to be okay. And yet, um, without knowing, you know, we, we're, we're, we might be, we might be moving. Okay. But because there's nothing that's really coming against us at the moment. Um, <clears throat> and back in 2018 and, and beginning of 19 and through 19, God was really speaking to me about, uh, looking at the foundation, looking at the bedrock, looking at what we are really built upon. Um, and so I began to really go through the verses there where Jesus uh, taught on um, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, you know. And <clears throat> so when we went to, when David and I, when we went to um, Nigeria, in 2019, that was the word that the Lord sent me with, that we would needed to uh, look at the foundation because the storms and the war, were coming, not would they come, not if they come, but they were coming. Yes. And, um, and, I, and I brought that word. And then actually after that, I thought, Lord, I, I don't even know for a fact, you know, could I reiterate, could I put it out on paper, the foundation that I stand upon. I believe I stand on a good foundation, but could I give that? Could I hand that over? Could I teach it to a, to a new convert? Okay. There's certain things of, of what I believe there's certain doctrines of things that we can teach and we can, we can reiterate well, but what about that foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified, the foundation of Jesus Christ being the center of the center, the foundation of that we are built on Jesus Christ and, and that foundation and that firm foundation. Is it a foundation of eschatology? Is it a foundation of, of holiness? Those are, those are teachings. Those are necessary things. But the foundation, if we're not rooted and grounded in Christ and in him crucified and that work which he's doing in us, we're not going to stand. We, we, will, we will suffer troubles. You know, um, David, a couple of weeks ago or whenever it was, I, I, you know, I wasn't on, but I heard that you shared a message and Gary said it was um, somewhat about marriage. So I went back and listened to it. And, um, and I heard, and I heard the things that you were sharing. And um, honestly, I don't know that it was so much about marriage, but the problems in marriage <laughs> and the things that are before us, if we don't get things straight, and so there's a foundation of marriage that I feel like many people don't understand. Now, it's not the foundation of the gospel, but it is definitely the foundation of marriage. And we enter in even to marriage without even understanding what the purpose and the plan of God for marriage was. And Susan and I, I for, for sure did not know what that was. Okay, I thought marriage was about me being me, me being the man and me being... Um, uh, understood or recognized as a man and Susan being, I didn't understand what that foundation was. And I, you know, we, we looked at, well, let me, let me take another step back. You know, we worked with um, youth in crisis. We worked with, um, it's, it's always been our desire to see youth brought up and, 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 and strengthened and established. And God opened the door for us to work with um, foster kids. Well, um, I really, I realized how desperate of a situation that was. And I began to work in that area and really press in and, and try to equip these children with the things that they needed to become strong. But in doing that, I recognized that there was something missing and there was something deeper that God wanted. I was dealing with fruit from something that was not in a good condition. And so God began to speak to me about parenting, that these children were the result of bad parenting. 
So we began to dig deep into that and to look for the foundation of parenting. And we began to teach and, and get involved in parenting. <laughs> and it was funny, but no, it wasn't funny. It was sad because we gave these tools to couples, Christian couples, that said they didn't work. And I'm like, these are scriptural tools. How could they not work? And so we began to shadow some of these couples and observe them. And we realized in our observation that the marriage was out of order. Mm. So then how can the tools that God gives us for parenting, how can they work if our marriage is out of order? Right. So we began to dig in deep there and we start saying, well, we have, to, we have to give them the tools for a proper foundation for a marriage. Well, as I began to do that, I realized that the men were out of order. They didn't know their position as a man. Yeah. We began to realize that the wives were out of order, that they didn't know their position as a woman. And as we began to counsel, as we began to speak to them, this kind of segues into what David was sharing and it was going on as we began to speak to them, we had people telling us, well, that doesn't apply. Well, that's outdated. Well, that's, that's maybe good for you, but it's not for me. Well, if he would do this, I would do this. And I'm like, what is going on? This is the word of God. What we're sharing is the word of God. And what I began to recognize is that many of us, many of us have neglected the foundation of the word of God, the validity and the, the strength and the power that that holds for us. And if we, if we neglect that, if we don't believe that, and we say we have a Christian um, church or Christian marriage, it's going to fall apart. It's not going to stand the test because when the enemy begins to come in and he begins to attack your, 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 your marriage, because it does, there's always an attack upon the marriage. Oh yeah. And if it's based upon something that is, um, we draw, we take scriptures that we choose then we're going to stumble. It's going to collapse. It's going to fall. For instance, if I, if if we're sharing with a couple about their marriage and they want to tell us that, well, I can't forgive him. He hasn't apologized. Well, that's not what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says you need to forgive. You must forgive. Matter of fact, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. Amen. Matter of fact, if you don't forgive and and you don't, you're going to be turned over to the tormentors. And you think your life is rough now, it's only going to get rougher. It's going to get worse and worse. And we have to, we have to go back and we have to keep. And so it has been a journey of going deeper. You know, I started way out here with the fruit <laughs> that wasn't so edible. And God has kept taking us deeper and deeper and deeper yeah. to the foundation bedrock that the word of God is is all about Jesus Christ and about what he is doing in us and what he is doing for himself. And he is preparing a bride without spot or wrinkle, that he is, that, that he is um, developing a people that are free from all of the, uh, all of the weights and sins that the so easily beset us. That he wants to set us free. That he wants to bring us into that place where he is, to be like him, okay? To be as he is. Not that we would ever be God, of course, but that we would be as him, that we would be compatible to him. He's developing a bride. He's developing one that, that can be un in union with him. Amen. So when we look at marriage, it says that the two should be one. Amen. And, and he's telling us, and, and I heard these things said that it's speaking of Christ in the church. Well, we can't be one with Christ if we're carrying around all of this baggage, if we are carrying around all of this darkness, all of these things that, that we need to be set free from. If we're carrying all that, we can't be one with him because light does not have fellowship with darkness. And if we're allowing darkness to, to remain and to, to abide within us, then we're not going to have that. So God has given us, um, God has given us marriage as a tool for sanctification, believe it or not. 
He has given us uh, marriage as, as a tool for bringing light into our lives, Amen. that he can put his finger on something, that he can show us something that he wants to deliver us of. Not for the purpose of, you know, I, marriage is such a wonderful uh, gift from God. No. Uh, it's not every, It's not exactly what I thought it was going to be in the beginning, <laughs> but it's much better than I thought, okay? It, it has proven to be marvelous uh, because it is, it's, it's, a, it's a safe place where I can open up and I can be transparent. First, sometimes it's to my wife, but it's ultimately to God. And God is putting his finger on something. And I just want to look at Ephesians a little bit. And then if, if time permits, I want, to, I want to look at something else. But I just want to look at Ephesians, you know, um, a little bit here. And I want to look at Ephesians um, chapter 1, verse 4. I want to start with that. Because we need to look at what is the... What is the ultimate purpose and the ultimate plan of God? Um, and I believe that, you know, he's talking to the saints there in verse four, he says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, God had a plan that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, I'm not there yet, but I mean, I'm a work in progress, okay? And the only way that that's going to happen is as I submit to him. You know, it says, be holy as he is holy. And it says in, in 1 John, he that has his hope in him purifieth himself as he is uh, uh, purifieth himself. You know, I tried that. I can't purify myself. It's God who's doing the purifying. But my part is to hear him and to submit to him. It's to say, yes, Lord. And it's to be, it's to open up and to allow him to do his work that he is doing that only he can do because we are to be holy in him, in love. Amen. And so in chapter um, two, Paul begins to, uh, Paul is talking about who we are and, and the work that God is doing. But then in, in chapter three, he says, uh, in verse four, again, he tells them that there's something that's been given to that's that whereby when you read that you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, that he is showing him something. And in verse six, he says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. He was saying that he says, you have, you have to understand something. Those of, uh, those of you that were considered dogs, those of you that were considered the scum of the earth mm -hmm. to us Jews, God has showed me that you are to be a fellow heir and join together with me, with the chosen people of God as one body. Amen. What does he say? That he has chosen man and woman to come together in marriage to be one. Two totally different people, a man and a woman, yeah. as far as <laughs> the East is from the West, that we should become one, okay? And he's saying that you Gentiles, and this is Paul speaking, Paul was not just an average Jew. He was a Jew of Jews. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, probably above many others, looked down on the Gentiles. He wouldn't even... He wouldn't even give them the time of day. Yes. This wasn't an easy thing. This wasn't something that Paul just said, yeah, I think I'll just start to like the Gentiles. This is not how that happened. This yeah. was far, far from Paul. It had been ingrained in him that the Gentiles were the dirt. They were the scum of the earth, that they were created just for, just for, for hell to be filled, to be occupied. And he and God was working a work in him. He said, Paul, Paul, there is going to be a, a uniting. There's going to be one body. There's going to be a coming together of, 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 of all men in me. In, and it's only going to be transpired by the love of God 
functioning and flowing in us by as we submit to that work of Christ within us. And, you know, as we look at this, as we look at these, this um, word that Paul is saying, which seems impossible, this same word is applied to marriage. Matter of fact, it's first applied to marriage because an elder cannot be an elder if he's not first a husband. Because there's something that we learn in our position as a husband, something that we learn in our position as a father that we then are able to apply to the church. You know, there were things that, you know, I, I made a lot of mistakes as a dad, but because my children were born to me and they loved me, they were easier, they forgave me easier. It's not quite that way in the church. It's a little harder sometimes. You can't make the same mistakes with the people of God that you make with your children. Uh, they're not quite as forgiving. It takes a little bit more to be forgiven. When we were working in foster care, we labored so, def uh, so tirelessly to gain ground with these kids. And we had a good position. But if we made a mistake, we lost so many miles with them. And it took so hard to come back. It wasn't the same with our natural children. We were there because there was a love that was grown up from the beginning. But God wants to develop that within us, even as the body, that our love one for another would be there, our forgiveness one for another. So verse four, Paul says, uh, chapter four rather, sorry, verse one, Paul says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. What vocation is he talking about? Is he talking about plumbers? Is he talking about carpenters? Or is he talking about the vocation of children of God, sons of God, believers, the vocation of believers? He says, I am calling, you have been called to be a minister. You've been called to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And I, I beseech you, I'm pleading with you that you walk worthy of that vocation that with all lowliness and meekness, with long, not, not proud and boastful, not power and authority over one another, not pressing one another and compelling one another, but with meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, putting up with, going the extra mile, right? You know, when, 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 when <clears throat> Jesus was talking to the people on the Sermon of the Mount. And he said, um, if he compels you to go one mile, go with him too. You know, if we don't understand who he was talking to and what, would, what that was about, we don't understand. But the Roman soldiers, at that time, Rome was in charge. And the Roman soldier could say to you, hey, you, take my bag and carry my bag. And the, the, the people were compelled to carry that bag for one mile. That was their obligation. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't just a random thing that Jesus was saying. He says, but you know what? Don't just do what you're compelled to do. When, it's, when you can lay it down after that mile, you can say, all right, I'm done. But instead, I want you to carry it another mile. I want you to go beyond. I want you to demonstrate the love of God to them. So there are things that we are compelled to do, but he is asking us. He's asking us. He's, he's actually commanding us to go beyond that. And you know what? He'll give us the strength to do it. With this lowliness and meekness and long suffering, we can't do that on our own. That when we try to do that, I've tried. And I come up short, okay, many times. But when I come up short, I say, Lord, I need, I need more grace. I need more grace to go that extra mile. I need more grace to, to, to walk, to, to carry this beyond what, what the expectation is, what the duty is. What can I do? To go that, how can I go that extra mile? How can I, how can I forbear? How can I long suffer to go an extra mile? And, and it's, it's in the love of God that he pours into us that comes forth. Endeavoring, verse three, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of, of peace. Why? Because they're one body. He is making the two one. He's making the two one in marriage but he's making a many membered body into one body that will become his bride. 
a body that has no friction, a body that has no ought against one another, a body that loves and cares for one another, that in depth, that, that, that long suffers and, and builds one another up, that works for the edification of one another, not for themselves, but for one another. He's bringing together a people of, of multiplicity, of multiple tribes and nations, of, of languages, and he's bringing us together Amen. to be one body. And he's doing it first in the marriage, in a marriage between a man and a woman. He's doing that first, and he's, and he's, he's, he's working things out in us, okay? So I'm going to go down here a little bit now. Um, and he has given us tools and he's given us um, teachers. He's given us gifts. He's put things in the body. And I want to, I want to, I want to share this next scripture. And I want to share it in light of um, parents with their children. Okay. Because we have children and God has given us actually commanded us to train them up for what purpose not that they can be good money they can earn lots of money that's that's okay that's a good benefit but that they can be mature individuals and that they could that they could uh, bring something back to the table of the nature and the character of Christ that you know we've trained up our children and, and we are blessed because we can go and we can fellowship with them and we give, but we also receive now because they, they know the Lord and they can come to the table with something that they have from God and we can receive of them. We're not the givers always. We also can receive. And that's the body. That's how it functions together. That we receive as a little baby, as a little baby, we, we receive from our mother. We're nursing, we're nursing, but there's something that God and, you know, if we were still nursing today, any of us on this call, it would be a problem. <laughs> OK, but there's something of growth that is necessary that as we're drawn from the breast and weaned from the milk or vice versa, that God begins to give us understanding here a little there a little line upon line precept upon precept. He begins to give us understanding and it's a training process. You know, I remember I went through. I don't really remember it that clearly, but I know because my report card says I went through first grade, then I went through second grade, and I went through third grade. And you know what? Every grade that I went through, I learned, I had the same core courses, but I took them at a deeper level. I learned them at a deeper level. And so we go through these things in Christianity. We go through these things in understanding God but we should be progressing and we need to learn them at a deeper level until what? Until we reach high school, we graduate, we get our diploma and our dad says, well, praise the Lord. Time to move on, son. <laughs> and we move on and we go into that next phase of life. Okay. And now we become, we, be, we, we now have a responsibility to, to dig and to, to get it for ourselves, okay? And that's where he says that you have no need that any man teach you for you, you learn from Christ, okay? It's not to say that we don't learn from one another, but it's saying that you have matured and you've come to a place where you can hear him, where, and there's an expectation that you will hear him and that then you will then bring back to the table that we all can be edified, okay? So it says here, just as he gave us parents, in Ephesians 4, verse 11, it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, some, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing process of the saints so that they could work the work of ministry, so that the saints could grow up and be able, be equipped, be matured, be, be responsible to work the ministry of God to do these things that God has called us to do. So he's given us teachers. He's given us these that would, would train us up, okay? Not to lord over us, not to give us food every single day, all the days of our life, but to teach us on, help, help us to understand on this level, help us to understand on the next level, and level by level, bringing us up more and more and deeper in the things of God, okay? Why? 
so that for the edifying of the body of Christ. So here's what happens is David brings something and and it, and it puts something in me and it brings about something in me and I bring something and then it puts something in Pat and then he brings something. And what happens is we're all maturing. We're all being strengthened and built up through this process of, of hearing and teaching rather through first it comes in a level of teaching because you teach babies, you teach toddlers. And then it comes to a level of training where they now begin to do what they've been taught and they're being redirected and they're being trained in that thing. And then it comes to the point where now they're just doing and they're bringing their portion. And there's just a, a oh, wow, that is really good. And so now everybody's being edified, okay? And it says, for the perfecting, till, the, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we, and here's the reason why, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness by where they lie in wait to receive, uh, to deceive. You know, there's, there's a need for maturity. There's a need for, and what is maturity? Maturity isn't only knowledge, but maturity is, it's discernment, it's um, understanding, it's wisdom, okay? It's knowing God. It's not just knowing about him, but it's knowing him. It's knowing how to hear and how to respond to God. And it's not just because what happens is there are other voices out there and I'm going to, I'm going to segue these in maybe into some other things in a, in a little bit, but what I'm really speaking about right now, okay, um, is even, this is actually, I'm talking here about marriage as well, okay? Because there's a process that we learn and we grow and we, and we develop even in marriage, just as we do in the family, just as we do in the church. And it says here in verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Speaking the truth in love. You know, Susan and I were talking about this the other day. Sometimes we can speak the truth to one another, but not in love. And it's not profitable. Yeah. Okay. It might still be true, but if it's not in love, it's not the truth. That's right. See, as a child, as an immature one, I can speak something that's true and I can hurt somebody with it. I can probably even destroy them. But if I speak the truth in love, it's for edification. And see, when I come to my wife and I can speak the truth in her, to her in love, it's going to build her up. And in her being built up, that brings us closer together. It brings us more into being one. And so as we can learn to do that on this level, then it can be done in the level with our children and it can be done on this greater level, this uh, maybe not a greater level, but this larger level of the family of God, the people of God. And we're edified and we're brought up. <clears throat> it says, and the whole body fitly joined together uncompacted by that which every joint supplies. See, she brings, I bring, we both bring. And it causes this small body, this, this individual body of, of Russell and Susan Blum, that it causes us to become more like more one, more, flow more in that unity and oneness that God is calling us into, okay? <clears throat> According to the effectual, effectual working in measure of every part, maketh increase of the body into the edifying of self in love. Okay, and now he's going to go back. Now he's, gonna, he's telling us the goal. He's saying, this is the goal. Now I want you to understand something. I say, therefore, in testifying that in the Lord, that you henceforth not walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 
being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. And he says, but you have not so learned Christ. He's saying, listen, you learned something. You were taught something. I taught you something. And now I want to remind you that this is not how you learned Christ. Okay. You learned Christ that uh, to, to walk in humility, to walk in meekness, to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. Okay. Don't walk in these other things. Put off the form of conversation. Okay. So what happens in marriage? Um, marriage has a way of unearthing things, <laughs> things that maybe are, are pretty well hidden, right? And um, here he says, put away lying in verse 25, speak every man truth with his neighbor, okay? And verse 26, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Okay, well, I don't know. Anybody here that's married knows that sometimes <laughs> there's some issue that comes out, right? And it comes to the light. Now, that scripture, I, I, I was meditating on that scripture. And, I, you know, some people say, oh, we got we to gotta apologize before we go to bed, before it's nighttime. Well, sometimes that's not impossible. Sometimes it's nighttime already. So, you know, how does that work? I think what this says, I think what this is saying, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Well, the sun is something that brings light, doesn't it? It brings, it brings, it, it, it permeates the darkness and brings forth light. In verse eight of Ephesians five, it says, for sometimes, for you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Okay, in verse 11, yeah. and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, think about this. Whatever makes manifest, whatever makes something manifest is light. Well, this marriage right here makes a lot of things of darkness manifest in me. And it brings them into the light. So I know that this marriage was ordained by God. That marriage was ordained by God just as the body of Christ is. But this is the core of it right here. And it brings the things that are hidden, the things that are in darkness, it brings them to the light. Yeah. And when they come to the light, I need to deal with it while they're in the light. Don't let the light, don't kind of push it off until it becomes something on the back burner, but deal with it. Don't let the light depart. Don't let the sun go down. Don't say, okay, well, it's a little bit too hot right now to deal with. I'll, I'll wait until things cool down and I'll kind of slip it in under the radar at another time. It's not going to work like that. It's going to come back again. But he's saying that it's going to come, darkness is going to come. He uses the marriage. He uses the body. He uses fellowship for the exact same thing. A lot of times, because we don't trust one another, we don't deal with it. We just kind of, <clears throat> and we talk about it later on. We talk about it in darkness again but he wants us to deal with it while it's in the light. And he's given us an opportunity with marriage to exercise that, to practice that, to learn how to deal with those things when he brings them to the light. See, he, is all, he also uses the body of Christ. He uses fellowship the same way. We rub one another and, and it causes something to rise up. And of course, something rises up in me. And I say, yeah, it's that brother. If he wouldn't have said that, I, how many of us do that with our spouse? How many of us do that with our acquaintances at work? Okay, marriage has been given to us because it's a safe place for God to work in our lives to perfect us. 
to bring us into that unity, that oneness that he desires, to work out of us all those spots and wrinkles. But if we, if we don't use that tool, then he's going to get a bigger tool, okay? If, he's, if we're not willing to let him use that tool, he's going to get a bigger tool and a bigger tool and a bigger tool. And see, we can hide things. We can hide things in our marriage. We can hide things in our, we can hide them and pretend they don't exist, but they will exist and they do exist and they get bigger and they get worse. I think Sister Sandra said that, um, and you can uh, kind of, if I, if I misquote it, but you said something about if you're dealing with uh, fornication or maybe even lusts and things like that. And if you're hiding them, they're going to turn into something in your marriage and possibly even lead to adultery. Okay. Um, you know, I, 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 we can try to hide these things, but they will grow and maybe it won't manifest in this level. Maybe it's going to take to the next level and it's going to be seen, or maybe we'll be able to hide it on that level. Maybe we'll be able to hide it until we die. And then it comes out. And then our testimony dishonors God. Our testimony brings disgrace to the name of God. You know, there's something that, um, something that God has been showing me recently. And I don't know, I, I haven't been on in a while, so I don't think I shared this with you. But in John 1.12, um, the Bible tells us that as many as received him, gave he the power to become, it's actually the children of God, okay? And um, I know King James says the sons of God, but it uses the word technon and, we, and we, uh, we understand that to be the children. And it's a, it's a relational position, uh, but it's not a full grown position, okay? And so he says, as many as received him, received what? You see, Jesus Christ laid down his life to purchase our salvation, to pay the debt that every one of us owed because we were all held in the kingdom of darkness because of the sin of Adam that was passed down to us. We, we inherited that. And he went and he came and he suffered and he died and he paid and he rose again and he paid that debt and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And now he stands before us and he says, would you receive this? You want to receive this to be purchased out of the debt that you, that you owe? And we can receive that. And so we receive that. And then he says, now that you've received it and you're a free man, I've given you authority. I've given you power to make a choice. That's pretty incredible. You can now choose to be my son, to be my child. And, you know, I, I only recently began to understand that. We, uh, when we were doing foster care, there was this 12-year-old kid. And to me, this kid was, he had no sense. He's a kid, he's 12 years old. And there was a couple, it was an excellent couple that wanted to adopt, to adopt this child. Now we had a, we worked for a facility that was very nice. It was really uh, upscale and we worked for them and, and, it seemed to be nice, you know, it was, it was nice, nice place to live and fun and stuff like that, but it wasn't a family. It wasn't a forever family. It wasn't a real home. Okay. And this child, these people wanted to adopt this child. They went through the whole process and they qualified and they were a good couple. They were good people. And the court asks this kid, do you want to be adopted by this couple? Do you want to have their name? You know what the kid said? No. He said, I, I want to stay where I'm at. And I'm thinking to myself, you stupid kid. Sorry. Sorry, Daniel, I'm using your word. Stupid kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking this court, this kid is 12 years old. How does he know what's best for him? Why would they give him that choice? But they did. And he didn't get adopted. But you know what? Jesus paid our debt. Exodus 21 is, a, is, a, is, a, um, is an example of this. It talks about a man that was in debt 
You want to turn there? We could turn there. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. okay. Because it's a, it's a really good um, example. Um, okay. Okay, if thou, uh, verse 2, 21 2. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years shall he serve thee. You know, it, it, you see, it specifies a Hebrew servant because this is speaking of um, someone that has an inheritance in the land. And see, we are, we, as when we accept Christ, we now have an inheritance. When we receive him, we have an inheritance. So he said, when you buy a Hebrew servant, this isn't an outsider. This is a Hebrew servant. Six years shall he serve you. And in the seventh year, he shall go out free for nothing. Um, and if he came in by himself, she shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master hath given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, then the wife and her children shall be the masters, and he shall go out by himself. In verse five, and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Now, what happens is after six years, the maximum of six years, it could be less, but, but the master he went and he took money and this man, he, he, he was in debt and he sold himself into, he was in debtor's prison, I guess. And so what happened was this man that had money goes there and says, I want to pay this man's debt. And so he gives the, the prison keeper the money that this man owed. He pays off that man's debt. Now he has in his hand the the authority to give this man freedom. But he could give it to him right then, but typically they had to work it off. So this is a type of Jesus Christ who went and he, and he bought our debt. He said, okay, I'm going to pay for their debt. So he now has that debt. But the, the marvelous thing with Jesus is he's not gonna make us work it off, okay? Mm -hmm. He's gonna say, look, I have your debt. You can go out free. You're a free man. So right here, he says, he's a free man. His debt has been paid. And if the servant shall plainly say, he has the authority now after that debt has been paid, he has the authority to do something, to make a choice. And he says that I have given you the authority. As many as received him gives he the power or the authority to choose. He says, I give you the authority now to make a decision. Do you want to go out free or do you want to abide? And if he says, I love my master, I love my wife, I love my children, I will not go out free. You know, I wonder how many of us have actually said that or many of, how many of us have just received that payment and we just live our life to please ourselves. How many of us have said, Lord, I love my master. I love you, Lord. I thank you for my freedom, but I want to give it back. I want to abide in your house. I want to remain in this place. I don't want to be in control again. I made a mess. And if we say that, if we say, I love my master, if we plainly say it, then he says, then his master, verse six, shall bring him unto the judges. It's gonna bring him to a place where there'll be a witness. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not coincidence that it's said that with a heart, with his heart, a man believeth, but with his mouth, he confesses unto salvation. Huh? There's something that we have to confess. There's something that requires witnesses. Why is that? Why is it when, when a baby is dedicated, they say, now you're all witnesses. Why is it that when, when we perform a marriage ceremony, there are witnesses? Why? Because theoretically, 
we're saying, I want you, I want you to hold me to an accountability to that what I've just professed with my mouth. So he brings him to the judges and to the door and to the doorpost. And his master then bores a hole through his ear with an awl. You know what he's saying? He said, if you're saying that, that you really love me and you want to abide in my house, I want you to give me your ear. Will you give me your ear? What is he saying here? Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to hear me? And it's not just hearing for the sake of accumulating information, is it? What's it for? What does he want us to, what is that servant? What's the position of that servant? The position is when the master says, hey, Russ, the servant jumps up and says, I'm coming, master. What, what, what do you want? What do you need? Can you get me a glass of water? Yes, sir. And he runs and he gets that water. He says, give me your ear. And the implication is that whatever I ask, you will do. Whatever I ask, you will make it your business to take care of, to do. And I look around me and I look at so many Christians that are living life their way. They're doing what they want. I look at so many marriages that don't understand that they have, that, that the purpose of that marriage, that God initiated for that marriage is for the, is for the perfecting of one another. It's for the growth, the maturing, the two becoming one, okay? It's for the, for the darkness to be purged out and that light could have its way in this marriage. I've seen so many Christians that they've accepted the, they've accepted the gift of, of salvation, but they've never made the declaration, I love my master and I want to, to abide in his house. But it says he has given us the power, the authority to say, yes, I want to take the name of the Lord. I want to carry that name. I want to bear that name on my name. I want that to be my new name. I don't want to carry my old life, my old name. I don't want it to be uh, my way, but I, I want to carry the name of my Lord, of my father, of my new father. And I want to let his kingdom come through me. I want his will to be done. Because what is the obligation of a son? Isn't it to do the, the work of his father? To propagate the, 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 the business of his father? I mean, that nowadays, that's not the way it's done. But that's the way it was done in that time. It's to carry on the things of his father. It's to expand the things of his father. And he's given us that power. He's given us the authority to choose to carry and to wear his name, to be, to be called by his name. And many have not made that choice. You know, and every time I share this, I feel like I have to make that choice again and say, Lord, I love my master. I choose to carry your name. I choose to be known by the name of Jesus Christ, by the name of Yahweh. I did choose to carry and to bear that name. You know, some say, well, I did that, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But aren't we told to die daily? Aren't we told to lay down our lives daily? I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything wrong with <coughs> declaring again that I love my master. You know, I wanna just take a minute and keep your microphone silent. You don't even have to say, well, maybe you do have to say it out loud. But I think that I just wanna take a moment if, if, if anybody recognizes that, that the Lord is speaking, do you love me? Do you, do you choose? Are you making a verbal commitment and choice? Are you, you have the freedom, he set us free and he's given us a choice. And have we chosen to tell him we love him and to say, Lord, here's my ear. Here's my ear, Lord. You know, the Bible tells us in Amos that in the, 
last days is going to be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. And I think that's because many of us have not given him our ear. And I want to just take a moment, just, just take a moment. I, I need to do it again myself. Uh, because Lord, I, I choose. I love you, Lord. I love my master. And I want to abide in your house. I don't want to go out and come in. I don't want to go and do things my way and do the things that are pleasing to me. But I want to serve you as a servant that, that willfully gives myself to you. Lord, I give you my ear today that I would hear your voice in that still small voice. I don't want you to have to be beating down the doors and pounding on me, but I want to be there at your feet, willingly listening to the voice of the master and willingly rising up whether it's inconvenient or, or whatever it is, Lord, whatever the circumstances, I want to rise up at the cry, at the voice of my master, answer the door and, 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 and do that which you are bidding me to do. Father, I'm asking that not just for me, but that all your people, Lord, that your children, those that you have laid down your life for, those that you have paid the price that they might be set free from the kingdom of darkness, that they would recognize today that they have the freedom, the power to choose to be children of God and to hear your voice and to give your, us our ear to you, Lord, that we would know you and that we would serve you. Lord, it's not something that we do of ourselves, but it's a response to the voice of God. It's a response to that which you are saying. Oh, God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just take a moment. If, if somebody wanted to share something or, or maybe take that a step further or question or whatever, I... I, I I could go on more, but I'm just going to take a moment here because um, I don't want to just talk knowledge. I don't want to just talk words. I, this, is, this is one of the key principles that are missing. These are one of the foundation principles that I believe is missing in the church today. God. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to say this, though. Uh, I really appreciate this word that is shared today. Uh, it seems like it's a very timely word that I, uh, I have been, my own personal, I'm just saying for my, for my own personal, um, you know, walk, is that I, I know that the Lord wants me to yield. And you know, every day we, we, we speak and we talk to the Lord and we say, Lord, did I surrender and, and so forth. But I find that there's something I believe the Lord is wanting. And, I, and this is where I, you know, I, I'm praying, you know, that I could I can say something. My heart, where's my heart at that I can get right down to business? Because what happens is things say are manifest. I say, what happened? What is it that the Lord I need to do? And sometimes we, we need to find that out about really what it is that is going on. You spoke about the foundation. And and I know that I've been praying about that. It's funny that you talk about that because I've been praying about. Where in a foundation, you know, that foundation has been laid with all of us, but what what we need to do with that foundation, what needs to be done with that foundation? In other words, what uh, uh, is there, you know, a part that is cracked? There's a, there's something that's not quite, you know, right or whatever it is, because there are some things that we seem to to go on with though, but there's something that seems to linger, that seems to, seem to struggle with whatever reason. And we can't get down to the bottom of it. And we, it's not that we don't confess it, 
you know, we, we may confess it to the Lord, but there's something going on. And I don't know whether you can say that it, it's deep rooted because of our inheritance, maybe because, I just, you know, you call it generational, uh, I guess, I don't know, generational curse, but there's something in our character and our being that we seem to have a problem with. And we, we need, uh, well, we need direction for sure, but we need understanding. We need understanding in it. Now, I know I do, you know, there's certain things about, you know, I can say, oh, you know, I grew up, say, say my environment, right? I grew up uh, in New York City. You know, I grew up uh, in, you know, uh, Harlem, Harlem, New York. And there are certain things, certain characteristics, certain things that seem to linger, in, you know, about that particular environment that needs to be rooted up. But it's something that seems to be so deep. Yet I know that God is able to, to uproot it. But what am I doing? What do I have to do? What is it necessary for me? What is it that I have to do in order for this to come forth? Yes. You know, so this is where I'm at. You know, you know, I, I'm I'm seeking a lot. You know, it's like I said, this is a very timely word because this is what I've been praying about. You know, uh, to give up. You know, our own life to lay down. You know, God wants us to lay it down. You know, I think that that's what the whole thing it was. You know, when He says about take upon me my yoke. You know, my yoke is easy. My, you know, take up. You know, lay it down. Get, get. You know, we we cannot run this thing ourselves. We can't do it ourselves, and we can't even do the things that that we're supposed to do without God. We have to enter into that place of rest. But it, it is a difficult thing. But it is, I know it's possible. I know that God is calling us right now to enter in. You know, we talk about enter in, but I, I uh, and I and I believe that uh, that there's an entering for, for all of us together. But there is an entering for every individual according to his own environment, according to his own circumstance, according to his own situation that we have to recognize. We can't say, well, you know, wait for somebody else or this or time or something. So that's why I'm praying, you know, and I'm, you know, I, I really take about what this word is. I know that this is what I want. You know, I, I don't want to live my own life. I want, you know, uh, 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 to be under the master's hand, to be yes. under the master's hand, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word you use, uh, to go out. I don't want to go out free. Yes. I don't want to go out free. I want to be under the master. And I find myself some things, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's repeating. And you're saying to yourself, what is this? Because you know, you know, and, and you want to uh, go forward. You want the victory over this thing. And uh, there's some, like I said, you know, there's, there's things that we, uh, that I, I believe that uh, we, we have to, I, you know, go to God and try to get uh, understanding of our own uh, thing. Yeah. We come forth. So praise God. Yes. You know, Glenn, um, am I on? Yeah. on? yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Glenn, we, um, the, what, what, what I read, read before is that um, all things that are approved are made manifest by the light for whatever doth make manifest is light. And God will use things to bring, to expose something in us, okay? A reaction, okay? Uh, a reaction, and when, it, when we react, we know in our heart that did, that did not honor God. And it's come to the light now. And it's at that point where before the light disappears, before we let it settle down, we say, God, what is the root of this? Sometimes we make an excuse for that, okay? We'll make an excuse, like whatever, you know, uh, typical excuse, well, is if my wife didn't do that, I would have never done that. I wouldn't have reacted that way. That's not true. If it wasn't her, it'd be something else. And God, because of his love for us, it's not because he wants to shame us that he brings these things out. It's because he loves us, okay? And he says, I want to set you free. 
But we have to respond to God. We have to say, God, this does not honor you. And I don't want it any longer. Can you show me the root of this? What is the cause of this thing that has me bound, that causes me to react in a way that dishonors you? And God is faithful and he begins to open up and he begins to show us that area. And it sometimes is a process. It's step by step. We might have to forgive on this level or we might have to repent on that level but it's not finished. It might go very deep, okay? But it's little by little, here a little, there a little. God is going to take you at your pace. But see, you have to respond to him. You have to say, yes, Lord. You have to say, you know when you do something that dishonors God. Nobody else has to show it to you. He, he pricks your heart. It might not even come out of your mouth. It might just be a thought, Okay. And you might think, whoa, where did that come from? Oh, God. But nobody knows. Even your wife don't know. But God does. And you do. And you say, Lord, where did that come from? God, that dishonored you. That thought is not of you. And that's when we begin to be transparent. When we begin to be open before God. And we say, Lord, search me. Huh? That We do. We've seen those songs. We pray those things. That's when he wants to move. When that happens, that's the moment. When you see it, when it comes to the light, deal with it while it's in the light. Oftentimes, we, we just kind of get a little sweaty, palms, and we do this, we do that, and then all of a sudden, things cool down. It seems back to normal. So, whew, whew, got by with that one. No, we didn't. It's going to come around again. You know, and I can't, I can't verify if these things we hear about Ravi Zacharias are true or not. Seems like they are. But let me let me be sure if they are true. God made many, many, many opportunities for him to deal with those things yes. while they were tiny. And 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 while they but but when we keep covering our sins, when we keep and you know, a thought that dishonors God is sin. It's mm-hmm. sin. We we might say, oh, it's just a little thought. I didn't do it, it didn't hurt anybody. It's sin. Because we're missing what God has for us. We're missing the coming forth of Christ within us. We're missing that fullness of the overcoming, okay? We're actually become an unbeliever. And I heard that too on that, on that message when David spoke, unbeliever, let the unbeliever depart. Wow, was he not saved? Oh, I think he may have been saved, he might still be saved, but he's not believing God for the fullness that God has for him. He's not believing God for the position that God wants to bring him into. He's not believing that God is capable of delivering him from this thing that has him bound. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God is more than able. And he says, do you believe? We say, no, I don't believe. And we walk away. The unbeliever is the one that puts God in a box and says he's not able. And we are limiting God. And we're, we're saying that God is not who he says he is. Wow, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Because he said that he came to set the captive free. He came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to, to heal the afflicted. Amen? That's what he came for. Yeah. Do you believe? Believest thou this? Huh? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Well, that's a good start. What we do is when we come up short and when we recognize this did not honor God, Lord, what, what is it in me? What am I holding on to? What is buried somewhere deep inside of me that is causing this type of behavior? Because I don't want to dishonor you. I love my master. And Lord, I don't want to go out because that thought just took me out the door. That thought just took me out of your presence because light hath no fellowship with darkness. God is not going to abide in a place that is thinking thoughts that don't honor him. So that just took us right out to the door. Lord, I don't want to go out. I want to abide in the house. Okay, well, listen, we need to deal with this thought. We need to go deeper. This is what, this is the root of that thing. And that's what God wants to do. He's, he loves us so much that he came to where we are to bring us to where he is. He's not going to abide where we are. He doesn't want to leave us there. That's what many people think. Oh, just come as you are. Say, don't worry about change. Well, that's right. You don't have to change. But God's going to change you if you yeah. allow him to. He's going to bring that thing to the surface and allow you to recognize it. 
But then it's up to you to respond and say, Lord, I don't want this. Lord, I want to honor you. I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my, how many times have we sung that? Yes. I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Yes. Heart or mind, whatever, to be acceptable in thy sight, oh God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray with let's pray with Glenn before we go on. Let's not move from this place. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I hear the cry. I hear the desire of my brother. And Lord, he knows this word of overcomer, and yet there's something that that has been that is deep seated in him that wants to keep drawing him back and keep pulling him down and telling him that he's not what he thinks he is. But yet, Lord, you have proclaimed it. You have called him. You said, here's my name. You are a son. You are a child of the most high God. <clears throat> and yet these voices, these voices, this, this, this woman that, that, that this one that wants to bring enticing words of men's wisdom, this one that wants to bring false words of doctrine to him, the teachings to him, words of lies, wants to bring him back into that trap. That, that, that you're not able to deliver him. But God, we know that you are more than able, that you are able to do all things exceedingly ab abundantly above that which we are able to ask or think. Thank so you, Father, Jesus. I pray for my brother. Yeah. I pray that you would give him the ability to hear God. what you're speaking. Lord, as, he, as that thought or that reaction comes to the surface, God, that you would, as he stops, and he says, Lord, this dishonors you. Lord, I want you to show me the root of this, that you will take him to that place, Lord, and that you will give him the ability in, in you, Lord, to break that yoke of hell, to break that yoke of bondage that has him still thinking that he is bound, Lord, Amen. that he would be able to rise up in fullness of liberty. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. brother, and the Amen. Lord wants Amen. to perfect that which concerns us. It's Amen. his desire. Praise and God. And when Russ talked about the ear, mm -hmm. that was probably incredibly significant to deliverance mm -hmm. when we need something from the lord when we look at our own souls and we realize that there's something amiss god orchestrates the time the place and the mode of deliverance and many times if it's uncomfortable to us we put it off you know, it will be, we, we almost say to God, yeah, God, I know that you're dealing with that, but this isn't the time. I'm in the middle of family. I'm in the middle of a discussion. I'm here. I'm there. And the time passes and we miss the opportunity. God is a God of exactness. He will revisit it. <laughs> sometimes, um, if we keep putting off the conviction of the Lord, it takes a while for us to get back to that place. Mm -hmm. His desire is to commune with us. And when he communes with us and we feel his presence and he begins to deal with us, there should be no delay. At that moment, we say, yea, Lord, mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. I know exactly what you're dealing with. I want deliverance now, Lord. And we could be anywhere, but we need to be able to be willing to let, a, let go of our circumstance to apprehend the deliverance and the relationship with the Lord that we desire. Amen. And so many times we tell the lord yeah i know you want to deal with that and i want you to but 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 it's not time now because i'm busy and like russ said that passes when it passes it's hard to get back 
to that place. You know, and the scripture says he will perfect that which concerns us, but we've got to come his way. We've got to come his way, even if it means stopping everything that we're doing that we think is important and walk away. Go find that hiding place where we can really get alone to be with the Lord. And I know God God's movement is many times not according to our timetable. And so I, I just know that it's not our own strength. It's when he calls for it, he gives us the ability, the power, the time, the deliverance, when he calls for it. And when he calls for it and we submit, it's done. And, and Sandra, that goes with the scripture, let not the sun go down upon thy wrath. You know, that word wrath also means exasperation. Mm. Sometimes we're exasperated. Yes. By maybe just by ourselves, but we don't yes. deal with it right then when God brings it to the light. You know, the sun comes in, think about the, think about how God put the sun and the purpose of it. It breaks forth and it takes all the darkness away and it brings light into the circumstance. So when the, when, when there's darkness in you and the sun comes forth and, and brings that thing to the light, that is the time you're exasperated. You're like, what's going on? But that is the time to deal with it. Don't let it, don't let it just and how many of us, we do it. I mean, oh, it's not the, just what you said. It's not the time. It's inconvenient. Well, well, she's really too hot to talk to her right now. You know, <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, is that we can't, God knows, God knows he has perfect timing. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, let's open this up. Anyone else? Amen. He has something for Brother Russ and the word he brought. Praise God. Daniel. Yeah, Brother Daniel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I, uh, what 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 I what I hear in my uh, spirit through through the things that you have been sharing is relationship, relationship, and. Uh, uh, the, we can have so many types of relationship, yeah. and but every re relationship that we are in, it has to be uh, grounded on this foundation yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. And the foundation that it was from the beginning of time was to become a life again. Amen. Amen. Let the life come forth in us. Amen. Breaking the breaking the, the nature of death or over over us and become alive. Amen. And if you if you look at uh, uh, Luke 15, uh, 15 and verse uh, uh, he is speaking about uh, leaving the 91, 99 behind mm -hmm. and rejecting the, the one that was lost. Yeah. And he he went out. It was not question for, for him. Uh, he 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 has to go out and, and, and find him. And he, he knew that he was going to find him. He knew that he was going to bring him home. But uh, but but this this heart to not I I'm not going to lost these things. I'm not going to see this go down. This nature of life, I'm going to, I'm going to let it be saved. Mm. And he he found it. He put it on his shoulder, mm -hmm. and uh, he he came home rejoicing. And uh, uh, this was a relationship to have this burden on our life. We put put this burden on our shoulder. We go through the life with in relationship that brings a burden in our life to lay our life down before 
uh, things that like is before us, for, for our, our, our wife or for, for our man or for our children. Yeah. Everything that happened in our, our life, the nature of life requests that we put our life down. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he came home with it rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And that is what, what really touched my heart in this, that he, he was rejoicing. And what was it that, uh, that makes that dif different, that he would to come home bearing this, uh, if, if you are bearing a sheep on your shoulder, yeah. it is smelling like a sheep, you start to smell like a sheep, but you are rejoicing. Yeah. And this, this rejoicing, is something that comes forth in our life that we can not even create. Yeah. It, is, it is a work of God in our life that he brings forth life in us mm -hmm. that make us rejoice. Because when he put this burden on his shoulder, he said that what you have done to one of my smallest one, you have done unto me. So when we are having this on our bur burden on our shoulder, we are rejoicing because we are we are bearing it like we are bearing Jesus. Yeah. We are bringing our brother or sister or, or children or friend, we are bringing it home as we are bringing him home. Yeah. And you can see when, when, when they laid down uh, the road of, of Aaron before the sanctuary, they laid down every, every road of, of tribe of Israel there. And over one night, when it came back, it was, it was a work of God that had been taking place. The road of Aaron had become alive. Hmm. It, was a, it was a different, you could see the two nature that was coming forth there. There, right. there was a nature of death mm -hmm. and the nature of Aaron yeah. that was there. But the nature of life overcame nature of death in this place. Amen. And that, that is what is coming forth in our, our, our day, in our life, in our spirit, in Amen. everything that we are going to meet. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed by this. So. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah, praise God. The rod of Aaron, it budded, mm -hmm. it blossomed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. It brought forth life. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord gave me a spiritual picture. Hmm. And what I saw is a beach scene. And it was at the time of the setting of the sun. And as you were looking, the sky was glorious. It was beautiful. And down at your feet was a precious coin. And it was at that moment that God was wanting you to find that coin, which was symbolic of your deliverance, that which you needed at that moment and that time. But if you waited too long, and once the sun went down and it became pitch black, you would no longer be able to see the coin. Mm -hmm. And by morning, 12 hours later, the sand would have shifted, the mm -hmm. water would have come in, the coin would have been buried. And when, when the light arose in the morning, that coin would not be there. Mm. It would be buried. It would be have shifted. It would have maybe gone into the sea. And God's prescription for deliverance and for healing and is an exact place at an exact time. And when we see it, we need to capture, Amen. capture it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Strike while the iron is hot. Yes. Amen. Praise God. You know, who, who I don't was that, Sandra, who was that you were talking to? I my phone went blank for a minute. Oh, okay. Oh, just um just sharing. Anybody? Okay. She yeah. Had a, she had I a heard yeah. yeah, I had a I I I saw in a in an open eyed yeah. vision. Yeah. It's interesting because lately they've been open eyed. I could just see the spiritual pictures here. Did you hear it? Did you? Yes, hear I did. I did. Yeah. I thought you yeah. were speaking to somebody individually. Okay. No, no. Yeah. You know, there's a time yeah. where the light 
is shining and it's very obvious what God has for us at that time, that yeah. exact time, that exact moment. And we know that if we reach down, it's for our taking and we pick it up. It is, it is appropriated to us. But if we wait even one minute too late, hmm. the light, sun goes down and you can no longer see, yeah. you know, and if you wait, even, even if you stood in that very place for 12 hours, it would be gone. It would be buried. Mm -hmm. It would have been taken away. The sand shifts. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and so there is an appropriate time and God calls that time. Yeah. He prepares your heart. He gives the exact timing for his deliverance. And all we have to do is say, yay, Lord. Yeah. I, I, I accept it. Yeah, I really, I, I accept your provision yeah. and he's so faithful. He is so faithful. Yeah. Amen. The vision goes right along with your word for us. Amen. Yeah. Did you just get that? Praise God. Pardon? No, yeah. I was saying, okay. yeah, did you just get that? You yeah, said yeah. you did. Yeah. You just got it. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's so right it now. flows right with the word that right. Right. Okay. Russ I is could... bringing. Amen. Yeah. Uh, one very key here. I, I want to interject it right here and we'll, then we move on. But one very important key is that you could come away with this word and say, okay, I'm going to try to listen closer. I'm going to try to hear God more perfectly. You're missing it. Amen. Yeah. The anointing was on the word and the anointing came in the prayer and the degree to which you prayed with Russ who is led by the spirit now, amen. You are actually giving your ear to the Lord, amen. It's no longer your ear. I, I want you to understand that, amen. You're giving your ear to the Lord to hear him and only him, praise God. Uh, some of us on this call, we know a brother by the name of Henry Groover, amen. He was a walker. He walked for the Lord. He prayed and he walked, amen. But there was a time when his foot was broken damaged amen and yet he had a compulsion within him an instinct to go as he had planned to go to japan amen and i'll, I'll never forget what he said to the lord he said lord you called me to walk and this is not my foot this is your foot and if you want to amputate my foot well then that's your business because you called me to walk and i'm going to walk and God miraculously healed him. Amen. Amen. But it was pressed to that point. So I pray we heard something today. And to the degree we give our ear to the Lord. Amen. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. What the Spirit is saying to the churches. Praise God, brother. Amen. So it's all in when we are willing, God is able. And to give us that ear, amen, that we can hear him, hear his voice. And obey. And obey. Yeah. Well, that's the next step. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Others, I think it's really a good word here today. Let's chew on this. Yes, Maxine. Praise God. Amen. There you are. Um, it, it was uh, last week. Um, a couple came over. And, and the way how the couple came over, it was the Lord's invite. And we were just happy to sit down, have dinner, and they came over. And um, it became apparent that they were, they had issues and fussing at each other. So when I heard Russ talking about the marriage, you know, um, I began to pray as I answered them. and the Lord gave me the message, you know, uh, uh, he began to download into me what to say. And so a lot of the ministers have to church before the marriage. And I, I remember saying to him that the church comes after the marriage because the marriage is the foundation that God had, that God has put together. Amen. I said, look at all the churches that are under attack. Yeah. Uh, especially in 2020, they've come under attack and shut down. 
-hmm. What if the family is destroyed, the church and the marriage is destroyed? And I just began to, to speak to him that he is the head of the household and he fills that, that priestly uh, um, head covering for his wife. And I said, if that is destroyed, then, then we have no hope. And so, um, you know, we, we can't interfere with the step that the, we can't skip one step and jump up. So um, us just was just confirming a lot. So I just sit here and soaking up. And I, and I said, Lord, you know, um, with all that you are saying, you know, it, it, you sent them over here to have me look at my you, 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 you know, it's, it's not a, a, a one, one couple has problems. We all have problems because it's our problem. It's, it's okay. So you're showing me from this angle and you're showing me from that angle. And, and, and you're saying, these are the areas that I need you to work on. This is what I need you to hear me about. Mm -hmm. This, this is what if for, for now and for the future. So um, that, that was um, that, like, that was the premise, that was the basis. So my takeaway was, you are really talking, you are really speaking to us about the heart, about um, one of the conversation was, oh, I'm over here in the word and she comes in and interrupts me and, and, and messes that moment up. And I said, when a vessel is empty, a vessel is looking to be filled. I said, she is looking to be filled, that you guys can be filled. And so it brought me back to even Alex and me, you know, sometime when we tussle and, 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 um, there is a message. There is a, a, a not just a by and by message, but there's a vital message to capture because the Lord is saying something. To prepare now to 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 be the soldier now, to do the warfare now, to take care of the things that needs to be taken care of in the life. So we don't sweep it under the darkness. And then when it comes back, you know, like uh, uh, the little imps coming back, the little foxes that spoils the vine and it comes back as a bigger and, and uh, 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 more uh, troublesome problem, then we're gonna wanna take care of it. So um, that, that is, um, that Russ, that's what you were saying about the, the it seems oh, oh I miss that oh I, then I must be okay but it isn't okay it, it isn't and and so when the light is shed when the light is shed upon the darkness you know we do have a tendency to run and run and run and run and then when when a problem comes up we're like oh Lord what should I do but we had the the, the time to take care of it when it was uh, a, a little one. In Jamaica, we have a saying, a stitch in time saves time. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have it, but it's a stitch. It literally, you watch your clothes unravel. Had you just stitched that little bit, it would not ha have unraveled in, 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 in so much more that you have to spend now time to 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 fix it amen. So that was amen. my that was my on it amen. amen amen praise god amen amen sister maxine praise god that's excellent yeah yeah the lord's clearly speaking here today amen so uh, let us not pass over that moment you know uh, strike while the iron's hot let us move let not the sun go down uh, you had another word, Russ, for wrath. What was that word again? Oh, um, exasperation. Yeah. Indignation and exasperation. 
Yeah. yeah. Think of that. Amen. Praise God. So there's an opportunity the Lord affords to us. Amen. Let, let's move with that. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else here today? Amen. This is very good. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Pat. Amen. A um, marooned man from North Carolina. Amen. Yes. Yes, marooned. Yeah. Um, yeah, first, I just want to say that uh, when I turned on the, the Zoom call and everybody was there, it was amazing. I just, <laughs> I just miss you guys, every one of you. Oh, so, we miss you too, Pat. <laughs> um, but um, I think that uh, I, one of the things that I, that I thought about when, uh, when Russ was talking about the marriage, you know, um, there are so many things in the marriage that par parallel what the Lord is doing in each of our lives, you know, um, and uh, a gift to each of us is is our mate, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, we, you know, men tend to, of course, well, if you follow, if you follow the structure of the Bible, you know, there's God and Jesus and man and woman, but that doesn't put anybody lower than the other, you know, it's, it's a kind of a, when you look at, you know, you're driving down the road and you see these guys with the stickers of the family on the back of their van and the, and then there's the dog and the cat and everything else like that. Um, it's, we're all on the same, if we've made a commitment, Amen. you know, if we're, if, if our ear is the Lord's, yes. you know, and, and, and it's, it's there, you know, we've made that commitment and we desire to make that change. The Lord is going to, is going to work within us and, and bring these things to our consciousness any way he can. Yeah. And of course, one of the best ways that he has is a man to a woman or a woman to a man, a wife to a husband, a husband to a wife. Yeah. Um, like, again, like Russ was saying, we have, uh, we are, we can be transparent. It's our point. It's our place of, <clears throat> excuse me. It's our point of safety. It's our place of safety. We feel comfortable mm -hmm. in expressing whatever we might be doing in the Lord or whatever the Lord is working on us and talking back and forth and so on and so forth. That's one instance, but the Lord can also give the wife a word to bring to the husband, you know, and she is, she is the second most important person in a husband's life. You know, I mean, there's God, and there's the wife, you know, on the other hand. And if, if you're not listening to God, God's going to use the first avenue on that list that he can get to. And that here's that same message, and he's going to give it to the man, you know. And, and very often, <clears throat> a man in his less than humble way might take... Uh, you know, not like that, you know, it, you know, I'm, I'm listening to God, you know, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, those, these are our basic things, but they're all things that are in this talk and in this message from the Lord, you know, and uh, it's just, I, early on, of course, I, I don't know if you all know my history, but I'm divorced and um, I, I love my wife my ex-wife, or however you want to say that. She's a wonderful woman. She's a wonderful mother. Um, we just, we had some really sticky times, and so we're not together anymore. But um, if there was anybody that could bring up, you know, uh, my, my, the things that I needed to work on, it was her. And I mean, it was uncanny how how the Lord talked to me through her, you know, and uh, so 
I just thought that was a very interesting thing. We, you know, we we tend to not want to look that way. You know, when we have everything we need inside of a family that Amen. that the body needs in our group, you know, Amen. in our family, you know, and um, we work with the body as a family the same way that the Lord works within our family to each of us. And Amen. it just is, uh, it just, a, it's a really important word. It really is to get that straight. Um, I had a couple other things here. I thought that the ear thing, I've never, never read that piece and heard that, that ear thing, you know, it is, it's, it, it just, it was amazing when you said that it was just a big, oh my gosh thing, you know, and uh, I just, I love that. But um, uh, let me see. I'm got. I got a few notes here. Um, oh, the learning thing. Oh, gosh, there's so so much in this message that we could take. We could take the first five minutes and we could talk about it for another twenty five. You know, and we could take the second five minutes. It just it was amazing, but. And like you said, if foundational stuff, this is the stuff that's important to me. Yeah. You know, this is the stuff that, um, for whatever reason, I, I don't know, but this is the, the kind of things that I want to understand so that, because I see this all the time and I don't, I don't really get the same, I don't know, it's something, the spirit talks to me in different ways and it's, it's I can read scripture um, but for, it's kind of a, a, my MO to hear the Lord through other people, you know, if you, if, if you can understand that. But um, I just think that uh, our, our learning thing, and it, that was amazing how when, when we're children, we act as a child, you know, and then as we, we go to school, and we learn, we not only learn different things, we learn how to learn. And we learn the things we need to allow more information to permeate us, you know. And in the body, this is we're we're all learning how to be Christ-like, you know, and we just we just have to. We have to listen to all these things. And another part of my MO is to, to hear these, but not necessarily listen to it. You know, mm -hmm. I hear these things, but then I go back to Pat, you know, and Pat goes on with his ways until somebody says something and I go, oh, and then back to Pat, you know, and, um, and I, well, this is the way I kind of, I go, I go back to Pat and I justify in my head and I say, well, that God's going to change it. God's going to work on that. He's the one working on that, you know, well, he brought it to your attention so you can work on it and he can work on it. There's things you have to do yes. in order to, for the work that the Lord is doing yeah. to function, to work, you know, and, um, and uh, it just, it's just all, that learning thing is just was an amazing piece. And we, we could stand on that for days. We could work on that for days. That just uh, was amazing. Um, I already said that one. I already said that one. Um, yeah, I said that one. Okay. Um, and well, I think that I'm, I haven't really the, the find the last thing I just want to say is, uh, well, I am maybe the next to the last was, um, but two becomes one. That is a secret right there. If we could hang on to how that, what that means in a marriage, um, if we could just grasp a hold of that and not slide down the pipe any further, yeah, that would. That's an amazing, amazing piece of scripture. Two becomes one right there. Right. Um, um, and, and the part about the last thing that I just, uh, was so immense to me was, um, you know, 
you, if the Lord brings you something and you have a chance to work on that, um, don't die before you work on that. You know, that's just, I mean, it's just so amazing. I never heard it put that way. You know, don't, don't, if you're working on it and you die, well, you're working on it, you know, but yeah. if you went at and went back to Pat and died, you know, the Lord's going to have to slap your hand for that one, you know, so I just, uh, I don't know, it was just a great talk. That's a great piece of information. So much good stuff here. It really is. Hey, Pat. Yo. Hey, Pat. I, I'm glad it's good information, but but it needs to be more than information. Oh, I know. And so and <laughs> I so I, I heard I heard a bit of what you shared just now, and you said you didn't hear the part about the ear ever before. Um, well, no, not in that piece of scripture, I'm I'm just saying. Yeah. But go ahead, go ahead. No, um, yeah, that piece of scripture. That's what I mean. You know, I I just. Um, I think it would be a good opportunity for you to actually declare in front of all of us that you love the Lord and you want to abide in his house. Because that's what I'm hearing from you, that you keep going back to Pat and God is drawing you in, but you keep going back to Pat. And he's saying, when will you declare in front of the, you know, the witnesses mm -hmm. that you love the Lord and you want to abide in his house? Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, I, I repent. You know, I do. I, I totally repent. My, the Lord knows my heart, you know, and I don't think that I go back to Pat any more than Russ goes back to Russ, you mm -hmm. know, or yes. any more than Alex goes back to Alex or, or Maxine or any of us, you know, but I, I, I repent and the Lord knows my heart. Um, and I'm, I still am part of this Adamic thing, you know, um, and that's the part that the Lord is changing. You know, um, and but as as uh, as you have asked, um, I repent and I want to change and I will change. And yeah. that, that part of me that is uh, wherever it came from my Adamic nature, my acquired junk, my all all of that stuff, genetic, whatever um, I I rebuke in the name of Jesus, you know, yeah. and I, I, I pray that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And I pray that the things don't grow and change my life or, or pull me away any more than they have. I want to be in the love of the Lord 24 hours a day. Amen. And if, if, uh, if I'm not saying what you want me to say, Russ, then please pray for me. Well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, you said you, you probably go back to Pat as much as I go back to me. Maybe you go less, but we don't judge ourselves. <laughs> oh, I understand. I understand. Yeah. The okay. thing is, is that what I hear you saying, and I hear it as a, as a prayer and a, and a statement, you know, because when you go back to Pat, that means you leave the place that God has provided oh, for his house and you go into Pat's house. Yeah. And while we're in God's house, <clears throat> he's in control. And so we, that's where the man said, I love my master. I want to abide in his house. I want to stay in his house. And he had to stay, say it in front of, in front of witnesses so that it was known that this was his choice. It was a mm -hmm. willful thing that he was choosing to abide in the house of the master. You know, and I and I and I say that myself, I do because I recognize when I when I go out and I go back to Russ, you know, and and I want to abide. I want to remain in my master's house because I love him, and I want to love him more and more. And I want that that nothing would separate me from the love of God, you know, nothing that I put in the way, you know. So that's all. And I'm I'm not asking for you to do it for me, you know, if just that make an opportunity that if you, if you needed to make a public declaration that I love my master and I want to abide in his house, that's all. Um, I'm, I'm full, fully, I'm right there with you. Um, yeah. I think kind of a, it, it might've been, you know, we make decisions without, uh, without conferring, 
with the Lord, you know, without praying and without, yeah, uh, we just have a habit of doing that. And that's what I mean by, I go back to Pat, you know, I have everything. I'm, I'm almost 70 and I have made a lot of decisions in my life and I'm really good at making decisions. Um, most of the time, although I guess if, uh, if I was that good at it, I wouldn't be here, you know, but, um, uh, uh, the Lord might want me sooner, you know, <laughs> right now, I'm, right now, I'm, he probably doesn't want me right there, you know, uh, but, uh, uh that's, uh, I, it doesn't mean that I gave up on the Lord. It doesn't mean that, uh, it just means that I haven't prayed and conferred with him, uh, in, in a lot of decisions or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, uh, but I understand what you're saying. And I do, um, just so that everybody knows I love Jesus Christ and I'm going to be here for the rest of my existence on this earth. And I'm going to be here forever. Amen. 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 Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Russ. No, I was just saying hallelujah. Amen. 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 Pat, there's such a spiritual sensitivity that I see in you, but it seems to have increased. You know, there's something that's transpired that is bringing the importance and the um, awareness of the creator greater than I've ever seen in you. It's just so tangible. And um, there's just such a, when you spoke today, you know, it's interesting because when, when someone speaks and it's the word of the Lord, it triggers the word of the Lord mm -hmm. in other people. It triggers revelation. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of things that you said that were amazing. One of them is you are hoping that people don't die, and I'm probably using my own words before the work is done, mm -hmm. you know, and that is, that's so true, because we can go our whole lives with God dealing with us, dealing with <coughs> us, dealing with us, and then when the time is up, he takes us, and we may not have fulfilled all that God has for us, mm -hmm. you know, so that, that was a poignant thought, like, Lord, <laughs> You know, oh, man. finish man. the work before you take me. I, I don't want to fall short. And then the second thing you said brought such revelation. It was um, that his desire is that we would be one. The two shall be one. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just showed me that when two people marry as unto the Lord, the Lord makes them one in the spirit. There's a ceiling that goes on, but in order for them to become joined together and really one, that takes work. Amen. You know, we have, we have the unction, the blessing of God that our marriage would be one, but then we need to work out just like the scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. You work out that oneness between husband and wife. And the blessing of God is on that oneness, but it takes a while to really become one naturally, yeah. you know. And then there was one other yeah. thing that you said. Um, it, it escapes me now, but there were like three things that you said that really, you know, bore witness with me. Amen. Yeah, Thanks, Lord. Amen. maybe it'll come back. But maybe yeah. it would come back. Uh, yeah, you know, she talked about a trigger. The word of God triggers. It's like a chain reaction. You know, it, is. it triggers in one, it triggers in another. Yeah. And generally, when you have even communication, you know, between two people, it goes back and forth. Iron sharpening iron, mm. and, and it's a marvelous thing. And you know, as I think about this scripture, where uh, the servant really was giving his ear to the master. You know, yes. uh, the all going through his ear. Yeah. It no longer was his ear. And yet the mm -hmm. scripture says, uh, we are not our own. We're bought with a price. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, that, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's just amazing. Yeah. 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 
We're not our own. So we belong in the house of the Lord. Yes, Maxine. Praise God. Well, I'm just, excuse me, just a second. The yeah. word all <laughs> in there in the scripture is A-U-L. But yeah. you, if you thought of it, it's A-L-L too. <laughs> all yes. goes through his ear now. You know? Amen. That's right. I mean, That's right. And an you know, also, book. Pat, I needed to finish with Pat. Oh, you got that. Pat. God, <laughs> Jennifer and her husband have brought forth a child. Amen. But that child is also a gift to you. Amen. Amen. And there is like an epiphany that has taken place from the time you saw that baby. You know, Amen. there's been a, an incredible change because in you it's the revelation of the love of jesus amen and how much not only does he love your daughter and her husband but how much he loves you because that baby is a gift to you that's your grandchild and i see i see something in the spirit that has changed since you are coming back yeah. from seeing that baby amen that that uh one of the things that is the realization there is, you know, this is, this is a family. I really believe that there was, there was a long period of time that my wife and I were with the Lord and our kids were conceived that way. And um, our kids went to church with us and uh, it was, it was a really great time in my life, but um, you know, as things uh, you know, as we went through life, we're, we're not together anymore, but it's really strange as a family. We, we seem to be closer now than we were before. And, uh, um, but to see that all come full circle, you know, our kids, we saw our kids and we were blessed by our kids. And it's hard to explain the, the blessing of holding your own grandchild you know um it's just absolutely amazing uh and i i have no idea uh, why i'm blessed the way i'm blessed i mean i do you know? <laughs> but it is just amazing to me uh it just god is so wonderful you know? yeah he's just amazing Amen. i'm sorry maxine <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I, um, it, the, the scripture that says um, uh, uh, um, when a man leaves his house and is joined, you know, uh, uh, with, with a wife that they're, they're twain, but when they marry, they become one. And, and you know, so many times, uh, uh, like Ruskin was saying that we we marry, but we're separate. And the, then the Lord begin to tell us how we're gonna be uh, 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 from twain to one. And I remember um, Alex and I were together a good sixteen years, and when we moved down here. He says, uh, one account. And I said, did I hear you correctly, Lord? You couldn't be talking to me to one account. Lord, I'm the saver. He's the spender. It, we can't operate on one account. You know, I'd have to throw him in the dumpster. I said, well, you, you, can't, you cannot mean that. But what he was really teaching, you have to become twain. What the scripture says, where, where our heart is, there's our treasure. So if we can share treasure between the two of us, what else can we share? And, and so you start from the bottom and build your way up to the top. So it, 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 it's like, if we could really share and, and what I said earlier, you know, one, one couple has a problem and we all have a problem because we have the, the um, we have the time to learn and to see and to grow. 
how how we can we can learn from that problem and strengthen each other. So um, it, it it brought me back to that account thing, and ever since then I'm like, you know, Lord, we have one account. We've had one account ever since. Um, several joints. <laughs> several joints account. Let's go to Alex. But but it, you you know it's like. Um, it should be one thought. It should one account. It should be one thought, one marriage, one bit, one of that. There is no separation. You, you see what I'm saying? You, you you go out. You know we're not senior seniors yet, but seniors are buying one plate and and eating off <laughs> and eating off one dinner. You know, and and it, it, and so it's a circulatory uh, uh, kind of giving. You, it, it, when when we can strengthen, then we start learning how to be um, one. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, no. that oh. <laughs> and 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 so um, you know that that's that's one of the part that you know that binds us together that we. We, we became twin and we saw how far that took us from to becoming one. And, 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 and so we're working on one, wrapping ourselves. Or, so I don't know where he, uh, uh, he ends and I don't know where I begin. So when, when we have these problems, when we have these down days, it's not that we're carrying the burden by myself. Oh, I'm not going to say anything um, because such and such. It is then that the light is there for you to share and we continue to be that twain because that's where the strength is. That's when, that's when the Lord is, it, he steps in and he says, remember, remember, not twain, one. It's one. one. Amen. Just one. Amen. And, and um, so that that's where you know that's where we are, and there is there is strength. There is a like a supernatural strength. Oh yeah. Amen. So like Amen. you were saying, like Maxine was saying too, when we hear other couples, um, you know as well. And Maxine or myself will minister to them about some of the issues they might have. It helps you kind of look back at yourself and say, wait, I see a little bit of that in myself too. I need to go back and mm -hmm. rework some things myself. So it, it helps you in that sense as well. Being part of the body and oh, yeah. being able to share the issues that um, come about, it helps, it helps you as well. It Amen. Says, it's good. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's that little thinking, thinking that we're, you know, we can handle this. We got this. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> um, there are times, Maxine, when um, people, men and women, they, they want to make themselves one or unify or, you know, so they set a goal and they're going to rally around that. <clears throat> and you know, I've seen people that don't know the Lord that actually seem as though they're one and in their own decision process, they are. But the one that God is doing with us <clears throat> is he's he's because I have a relation with him. He is a, he is pointing out and he is bringing out the darkness in me and he's and he re replacing it with his light. And he's doing the same for Susan. And so as the darkness in me is removed and the darkness in her is removed and the light of Christ is, is being shed abroad in both of us, we're coming into this union of, of light that's his light, not our own. And we are one because we are one in Christ. And that is the exact example. In the, the, the marriage is the first church. So that is the example. That's why he says, I show you a mystery, but it's Christ in the church because what is being done in the marriage must be done in church. And because the enemy has fought so hard against the marriage and the church is so messed up. People don't know what's supposed to be imitating what, you know, but we are supposed to be, the marriage is supposed to be the example of what's happening in the church. Yes. Amen. 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 
Yeah, you we know. hear a lot about that too, where it's you know, always wonder, well, you know, you guys are Christians, you're believers, but you know, they always say, well, I should say non-believers will say, but look at your marriages, you're just as bad as the world. Like, why aren't you guys succeeding if you're following the Lord, mm -hmm. you're becoming one? It's like mm -hmm. you're you're just not something's not awry and just um from even some of our friends who are pastors, you know, we see that they're divorced or separated from their wives. Oh, and it's like, yeah, and it's like they they put they put that walk with the Lord ahead of their wives, mm -hmm. ahead of their family, mm -hmm. and it just is out of order. And it it's just not gonna work. And unfortunately, that's what we see mm -hmm. a lot of too much, yeah. too many times. Yeah, no. Well, not their walk with the Lord, but that but the work that they're doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our walk with the Lord has to be first. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah. never, we'll never maintain yeah. that. Yeah, the work is correct. You're right. Yeah, yeah. they do that. Yeah. And they put that in there yeah. everything else. Yeah. Amen. I saw a beautiful example that I've been thinking about over the last few weeks. Vinny, it's pertaining to you. <laughs> um, you shared a story, just a real simple little excerpt and it spoke volumes to me you said that your husband um had eight you know spends time in the word all day you know communing with the lord and in the word and you said when you come home you are able and i'm just paraphrasing because i don't remember the exact words but you become the first partaker of what <laughs> God gives him. Yeah. And it was such a place of joy and excitement mm -hmm. that when you came home, you were looking forward to what God had mm -hmm. spoke to your husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that spoke volumes to me. Mm -hmm. That really mm -hmm. did. Because it, it just showed the appreciation for who he is in the Lord. And the fact that maybe you're working and you didn't have that time, but you were able to be blessed by it because you'd be the first one to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about a lot about that um, over the last few weeks since you spoke that. And it I just Lord. wanted to let you know, it really blessed me. Amen. It blessed me to hear it because so many times we become so familiar, familiar with one another that when you know your husband or your wife shares um maybe you're just too used to it and it doesn't have that kind of significance and that should never be because when someone is spending <coughs> time with the lord in our home our household when they begin to share it should be as thus saith the lord and we should take that in that yeah. light. So I just wanted to thank you for sharing that. It really, yeah. it really meant a lot Amen. for me to hear it. Yeah, you became first partaker of the fruit. Praise you God. became it's first hard. partaker. <laughs> that's of wonderful. The fruit. Yeah. That that's, that's so great. so amazing Amen. to hear that. Amen. Mm. And you know the key of the whole word even today about the marriage and the husband and the wife and the two becoming one. Behold, I show you a mystery, Jesus was saying. I'm showing you Christ in the church. So there's, there's the two becoming one. And to become one with Jesus Christ, I, I, I can't even wrap my head around it for decades. I mean, I just can't even fathom what that means. But I believe God. I believe his word more than my own thoughts. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I believe as we give ourselves to him, he's going to make it happen. So if we're willing to give him our ear, he will take our ear and give us ears to hear. We will hear him. It won't be a striving. It's because it already belongs to him. Yes. We give ourselves. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. Amen. <clears throat> Praise Thank God. you, Brother Ross. That oh, was an excellent, excellent message. Yeah. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, Brother Daniel. Yes. Uh, Pat, I have a little word for you. Uh, when you were sharing, uh, 
I saw I saw a picture of you, and uh, in this picture you were you were uh, standing and you were drawing a rope, and uh, it it was like you were drawing it uh, more and more, and uh, sometimes the rope was dry, and sometimes the rope rope became wet. And uh, in some season, the rope came very hot, and sometimes it was very cold. And you were looking at this rope, and you were seeing that it was it was very very long rope. But this rope is Christ, and and He said, Re "Rejoice and 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 enjoy the relationship and the moment with me." Mm. Mm. Praise mm. God. Amen. Excellent. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Apply that word, Pat, to every moment. Praise God. It's excellent. Amen. Um, I just I just wanted to um also just say, Russ, that the the part I get that part where you said about exclaiming, you know, in public. Um, and I, and I did, that was the one thing that I was uh, thinking about was we do that in baptism. You know, we do that in the baptism. It's not only for us and it's not only for the Lord. It's for, it's for us. It's, it's for those around us to see our commitment, you know, our desire and, uh, and, and it also, it also drives um that home anytime we exclaim in public our love for the lord and our uh our desire to walk with him forever it it just it just uh it it witnesses it ministers you know and that's okay. that's what we are you know mm -hmm. so thank you so okay. much amen praise god amen. amen excellent brother praise god amen well, amen. So many portions of the word that was shared today. Let's chew on them during this week. Praise God. Mm. Let's come back to our hearts. Meditate on them. Even the scriptures that were shared. Amen. And amen. And the one scripture that was quickened this morning uh, to me is, Lord, teach us to number our days mm. that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Brethren, our time is more than half spent on this call, amen, as far as our daily lives and how much life we have left, amen. Let us really diligently apply our hearts to wisdom, amen. Teach us, Lord, to number our days that every day, amen, is that portion that you want to accomplish in our life by the end of our days, we yes. have accomplished, <clears throat> We're not leaving other things undone. And that requires us to strike while the iron's hot. That requires us to, in that moment when the light shines, is to let the light accomplish its work. Praise God. Amen. amen. Brother Russ, will you close us in prayer today? And amen. Praise God. Thank you, brethren, for coming amen. out today. Thank each one. Great. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that. Because of you, the sun rose this day and we, and we have life. And we have an, another opportunity in which to praise you, in which to serve you, that thy will might be done and accomplished in our lives and through our lives. Lord, let us not, um, let us not take for granted the things that you have given to us, the words, the understanding of your word that you have given to us. But Lord, with all diligence, let us apply that which you have spoken. Let us, let us bring it back to you. Let us chew on it till it becomes uh, life to our very being, Lord, that it begins to flow forth through us and out of us, God, that it brings life to those that are around about us. Lord, let us come to that place of, of feeding on you, that the life flows through us and that it's a reality. It's not something we know, but it's something that we are. The reality of Jesus Christ becomes life in us and flows through us. And those around us become partakers of that life. My God, let us 
feed upon your word. Let us recognize that your word is spirit and life. It's not just words that are written on a word, but they are the very life of Jesus Christ that became flesh and dwelt among us and now dwells within us. My God, let us not be let us not be lackadaisical in the things that you have given us and the time that you have given to us. But Lord, let us move with all diligence. And even as David said, counting the days, numbering the days, recognizing that this is a gift from you and that we should be uh, that we should not waste it, but we should use it to your glory. Mm-hmm. Let thy kingdom come and thy will be done, Lord, that you might receive all glory in Jesus name. Mm. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Well, bless you, brethren. Praise God. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. <coughs> Thank you, Brother Ross, Sister Susan, for taking time out of your schedule there in Colorado. We pray the Lord bless. Let's take a moment to pray for Russ and Susan. Amen. They're there another few weeks. Praise God. Father, we lift up our brother and our sister before you. Father, we're praying, God, there's purpose in every travel. There's purpose in our going. There's purpose in our return. There's purpose in the journey. Father, we're praying, God, that you would quicken, anoint, and fulfill the purpose that, Lord, every day would be accounted for in your spirit, Lord God, that every day in the profit for thy kingdom, that category would be filled. Amen. And the category of Russ and Susan, amen. The the goals of man, the flesh of man, there be an empty category there in the name of Jesus. Father, we just pray, fill that category that which is filled with your direction, your spirit. Father, we want to abide in the house. Amen. We want to say with the depths of our heart, we love you, Lord God. We love our master. And we pray for Russ and Susan that you accomplish all your will while they are there in Colorado. Regardless how great or small it is on man's scales, what matters is the will of God being done. Amen. That nothing is left undone on your chart for them. In the name of Jesus, guide them by your spirit. Direct them according to your will. Father, we just pray, lead them in all that you have for them in their portion of time there in Colorado and bless them upon their return to Georgia, we pray in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. I just want to say this, then I want to pray. Uh, uh, Russ and Susan, uh, you know, as you, as you was speaking, you were speaking, you know, I, I really, well, first of all, I, you know, we appreciate, of course, the word that you have brought forth, and I, I, I but I, I, I look at you too, and I see uh, something that God is doing. You no, know, he, he uh, this relationship, relationship. That's what came to me. Relationship. He, God is doing something in you too. To, to this is the portion that God is working through for the body that He is bringing forth something that deals with this connection. This, this connection that the connection with him and the connection with the father and i'm praying now that your fulfillment this purpose that you have started that god has started in you too that it will be fulfilled and that the double portion of what you are moving in because you're coming just like you were saying earlier Russ, you, you we're going to another level so now whatever purpose and plan that god has for you too that you would have that double portion that you'll be able to get through it Whatever you're dealing with, whatever people. So, Lord God, we pray now for our brother and sister, Lord God. Lord God, whatever our, our journey, this war, Lord, we, we, we know that this is a war that you are prepared, uh, 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 moving forward in, Lord, in them, Lord God. So, we pray, Lord God, that everything they need, well, they will have it, Lord. And we pray for that double portion, Lord God, for this time, Lord God, as they enter into other places, Lord God. That you would you're raising them up, Lord God. We pray that they will have the strength. We pray that they have the life. We pray that they have the vitality and the abilities in every aspect, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that they would be on point, Lord God, as the things, Lord God, that you speak to them to others. Hallelujah, Lord. And Lord, that will continue, Lord. That will continue, and they would uh and they will be blessed by it, Lord God. Not only they'll bless others, but they'll be blessed in the process, Lord God. 
And we pray that you would help them in every way, their provisions, their needs, and all these things, Lord God, would work out, Lord God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Oh, yeah, amen. Brother Joe, honestly, I know you've been struggling on and off, on and off all day <laughs> in Port Harcourt. I know it's hard to get a connection down there. But if you can take a moment, if you can come on, uh, you can say a greeting to the brethren before we sign off. Amen. Praise God. Are you there? He has he has quite a struggle getting on many times, brethren, from Port Harcourt. But uh, mm. we really appreciate his effort. I think he tried several times, maybe a dozen times today, coming on and off. Mm. He wasn't able to connect. Praise God. Amen. Lord, take away every frustration. We do pray for our brother, Joe. Yes. We thank you, Lord, Amen. for our time with him. Yeah. We thank you, God, for his faithfulness. We pray, God, today that you would bless him Amen. exceedingly, abundantly above that which he even asks or thinks or hopes. Lord, you'd minister to him, Lord, that there would be no loss that father you see his efforts and you see his desire for fellowship and lord they that seek you shall be filled amen. in jesus name amen Praise amen. 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 amen excellent well bless you brethren sister bye. fasola thank bye, you for joining fasola. us tonight on bye. sunday evening amen bye pat God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> uh, can I say something before yes. everyone is going? Go ahead. Amen. My husband is celebrating his 60th birthday today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> is that his birthday? Is that 60? Oh, 60. 60. Okay. Oh. Well, we were going to sing for joy, so we'll sing for you. <laughs> a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. Now I know, Susan, <laughs> you have another song, a birthday song. Go ahead, please sing, please okay. sing it. Okay. A happy birthday, a happy birthday, a happy birthday to you. May you feel the love of Jesus all year through a happy birthday a happy birthday a happy birthday to you and i thank god for every remembrance of you yes we thank god for every remembrance of you Happy birthday, Brother Daniel. Happy <laughs> birthday. Max Dan, do you have another one? <laughs> oh, yes, I, I do. Go ahead. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> you will be true. May God rich his blessings abide upon you. <laughs> I'm I'm just feeling young. <laughs> that's, oh, that's great. That's okay. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Bless you on your birthday. Have a today, wonderful brother. day. Amen. Amen. Good night, brethren. Bless you. Good night. See you. Rest of the season. Yes. Bye bye now. All right. Bye.